now let's discuss 8086 entrance the definition of the interrupt says that it is a process of interrupting the normal execution of the program to carry out some specific task that task which is known as a specific task is basically the interrupt service routine it is generated by an external signal by the peripheral devices or interrupt signals may be generated by a spe special instructions in the program or it may be internally generated due to some exceptional conditional conditions while executing some instructions coming to the process of interrupt but before that let's take a look of the types of the interrupts uh, there are hardware and software interrupts maskable and non maskable interrupts and vectored and non vectored interrupts the definitions of these interrupts are similar which we have already discussed in 8085 so there is no need to uh, go through the definitions but the process wise what are the, uh, the processes of these interrupts and what are the types of the interrupts what are the examples of the interrupts in 8086 microprocessor we'll discuss in the later slides and in the very last we'll discuss the interrupt vector table which is most important segment of this particular presentation so the interrupt process says that uh, when an interrupt is generated by any uh, external device or due to some instructions by the programmer the very first thing that the microprocessor does is that it pushes the flags or in other words the program status verb which contains the accumulator as well as flag into the stack so very first thing the program status word is shifted to the uh, stack the second thing is that is that it clears the trap flag and interrupt flag because no other interrupt request can be handled at the time because one interrupt is processed so it clears the trap flag as well as interrupt flag next is the code segment and instruction pointer which in turn produces the physical memory location address it pushes these two register values onto this uh, stack the main program um, cs and ip that is the, the the instruction of the program that is currently being executed uh, and the address is given by the code segment address register uh, address value plus the instruction pointer these two values of two byte each that means total four bytes are shifted to the or transferred to the stack memory pushed into the stack memory now interrupt service routine has some locations where the interrupt is to be serviced the program of the interrupt should be uh, executed so for that we need to load the program of the interrupt programs code segment value plus the instruction pointer value so that we can calculate the exact physical address of the location where the interrupt service routine is available so after pushing all the stack uh, all the cs and ip and flags into the stack we load the interrupt service routine code segment and instruction pointers value then we'll execute the interrupt service routine after the execution of the interrupt service routine at the end of the isr we have an interrupt return request that is termed as iret when iret comes that means we need to go back to the main program to go back to main program we need to have the value of the ip and cs that means instruction pointer and code segment register value of the main program which we have already stored in the stack so we need to pop it from the stack memory so we'll pop the values of cs and ip from the stack 
these CS and IP values are of the main program. Then we'll pop the flags or the program status word because there may be a possibility uh, that uh, we uh, while executing the ISR the flags and the contents of the accumulators are changed. So uh, when we are going back to the main program we need to maintain the flag status plus the accumulator and accumulator content of the uh, current execution so of the main program execution that is why we have already stored it into the stack and then before continuing the main program execution we need to have or collect uh, these two values back into the accumulator as well as in flag as cs and ip both are of uh, two byte that means every single value will get two different memory location that is why the stack pointer while uh, pushing the value the stack pointer is decremented by 2 in this case the uh, stack pointer is decremented by 4 because it first decremented the uh, 2 bytes of CS and then 2 bytes for IP similarly when while popping we will be having uh, plus 2 increment as we are popping the value from the stack. The type of interrupt specifically for 8086 is uh, the hardware and software. So we will discuss first uh, what are the hardware and software interrupts. Hardware interrupts are initiated by the peripheral device to the pins of the microprocessor 8085. In 8085 pin diagram we have already dis discussed the two pins are dedicated for interrupt. The first one is INTR and the second one is NMI that is non-maskable interrupt. So these two pins are basically for the hardware uh, interrupt only two interrupts can be generated through hardwares because only two pins are dedicated to the uh, microprocessor 8086 software interrupts are basically the instructions uh, given by the programmer and they are used to implement some system services or uh, you can say calls call or return functions the other category in which we can classify the interrupts is vectored and non-vectored. Vectored is uh, when the program automatically branches to a specific address. That means a vector location of the interrupt service routine is defined and is given by uh, the 8086 itself. And non-vectored interrupts are those in which the interrupt service routine address is not given by the instruction, is given by basically the interrupting device which is uh, uh, generating the interrupt request to microprocessor. So that device will give where the interrupt service routine is available in the memory. The address of the interrupt service routine is given by that device to microprocessor. And from that address, it uh, execute the interrupt service routine and get back to the main program. The maskable and non-maskable interrupts are uh, already known. A maskable which can be disabled and non-maskable which cannot be disabled. So the maskable interrupt is basically, you can say, an interrupt which can be uh, ignored or can be masked is INTR and which cannot be maskable or which cannot be ignored or disabled is non-maskable interrupt that is INMI for example. Next is the interrupt vector table. Interrupt vector table is basically uh, shows uh, the type of software interrupts if we classify the software interrupts then we have 256 types of to, uh, software interrupts and these 256 types of software interrupts has definite or fixed values where the interrupt service routine address is available for that particular interrupt so to store these 256 interrupts interrupt service routine address value we need to have some specific memory inside or within the memory so we know uh, 8086A is of 20 bit um, address bus and uh, total 1 mega locations of memory of 1 by each can be pointed out by the 8086 microprocessor. Uh, from that 1 mega byte locations uh, we use uh, 1 kilobyte um, memory uh, for this interrupt vector table. It starts from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and ends up to 0, 0, 003 FFH. 
that means it is having total 1024 bytes values if you convert 1024 into hexadecimal then you will get 003 mm. Now why 256, uh, why we can uh, have these 1024 uh, byte value because we have total 256 instructions and for every single instruction we need to store two different, uh, we need to get basically two different things to calculate the physical address. The two different thing is the code segment address uh, plus the instruction pointer. So code segment address is of 16 bit and instruction pointer is also of 16 bit. So two byte each for IP and two byte each for CS for, for every single um, uh, instruction or interrupt we need four bytes. So 256 are total interrupts and four bytes for one interrupt that means total two, 1024 bytes are required. So 1024 bytes are basically 003FF in hexadecimal. We have written the two for CS and two for IP. And four bytes is for one interrupt because two is for CS and two is for IP. ISP is basically the interrupt service procedure. And the interrupt vector table has the starting addresses of the ISP. Now address, the starting address of ISP, that means interrupt service procedure. Uh, the physical memory location of this interrupt service procedure is basically of 20 bit and for uh, getting the 20 bit value of the physical memory location we need two different things code segment value plus instruction pointer so code segment is of two byte and instruction pointer is of two byte so these four bytes will give you the starting address of the internal ser uh, interrupt service procedure right the other thing which is most important is uh, the software interrupts can be classified into uh, 256 types and out of these 256 types five interrupts are predefined five interrupts are predefined that is int00 int01 int02 int03 and int04 so type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 these five interrupts are already defined or predefined basically in type 0 uh, we have a divide by 0 interrupt now why what is divide divide by 0 interrupt when when a number is divided by 0 you will get an infinite uh, value or you can say a very large value that very large value cannot be stored in a single register or in a single memory location so the result cannot be stored and in that case the divide by 0 interrupt occurs the next type 1 interrupt is uh, basically a single step interrupt single step interrupt says that uh, when we uh, execute the program when we want to execute the program in step by step manner then we use the type 1 interrupt in the step by step or single step um, execution um, the type 1 interrupt is needed and it is used uh, to uh, basically identify where are the errors in the main program and in what step the error is and after executing the instructions step by step we can easily identify where the error, error is and during that step we can also modify the error so bugs can easily be identified and bugs can easily be easily be removed in this single step interrupt uh, manner the single step interrupt ha hand over the uh, control to the user so that a user can give the command to for the next instruction to be executed or it may change the program if an error occur or if um, bugs are identified then it can be eliminated by the user the third that is type 2 is for the NMI that is non maskable interrupt non maskable interrupt is basically when the non maskable interrupts uh, value or bit value uh, transition from low to high in that case the same process uh, the flag pushed onto the stack trap and interrupt flags are uh, reset CS and IP value of the next instruction of the main program is pushed onto the stack and CS and IP of the interrupt service routine are loaded into the CSIP 
the process uh, of the interrupt is exactly followed by this NMI. The next type 3 uh, interrupt is uh, the single byte instruction or you can say a breakpoint. Now breakpoint is basically when we want to execute uh, uh, um, from for example I have a 40 line uh, instructions or program that contains 40 uh, memory location 40 instruction and we want to execute basically uh, the starting 10 uh, um, uh, instructions. So we can have a breakpoint uh, on the uh, after the 10th instruction. So when a breakpoint or type 3 interrupt is uh, implemented then the breakpoint up the instructions up to the breakpoint will be executed and uh, after the breakpoint the system or the in the interrupt service is uh, interrupt is uh, served so if we want to execute a number of instructions um, at a single time to identify a step or a process uh, of the main program then that can be used rather than to use single step or line by line command we can use a breakpoint command that is given by type 3. This is also a breakpoint. It's single byte instruction reserved for INT single byte instruction or is a breakpoint. Now this type 4 is basically the interrupt overflow. When overflow occurs uh, we have already discussed that in signed bit arithmetic operations if the uh, result is too large to, to fit in the destination register then an overflow occurs. So when the overflow occurs this will be the type 4 uh, interrupt. Uh, now there are uh, total um, 256 so we can have total type FF. These are predefined, these 5 are predefined. The rest others can be configured by the uh, programmer. We can have, um, we can use basically uh, uh, from 0 to 255 total 256 software instructions these five are fixed these uh, remaining uh, 251 are by the programmer thank you